morning. Well, it's a beautiful morning actually. It's cold and it's a bit bright, which we haven't had for a few days. So fantastic. And uh, well, there's quite a few things to do on the plot today. And one that oh, I've not really been looking forward to doing, been putting it off. We'll get to that in a bit. But we're in the polytunnel, so let's have a look at those onions, see how they're faring. Now, there is some cold weather in the forecast, so don't look at these and get excited about sowing because you really don't want to be sowing much when it's this cold. Right, yeah, we're getting the first few crooks. They're opening up from those hoops and sticking the tip of the ceiling into the air, which is wonderful to see. And I think I've got 100% germination. No, I've got one missing there, but who knows? It might come up. There's a tiny one there. And over here, still no sign of the Ryan's burger. That was fairly old seed, so there is a risk. And the other two, which is Zebrun and Bedfordshire Champion, are coming up nicely. I doubt if there's anything in here. No, nope, far too early yet for peppers. That'll be a real experiment to see whether they come up in the polytunnel having been sown in January and I take the view that you know in nature seeds land in the ground go under the soil one way or another and start to sprout but of course peppers not native to the UK right well Strawberries are doing okay. Lots of leaf now, including an enormous dock, which I'm not really going to do much with until I open that up and plant out my strawberries along the side of the raspberry bed, which is looking mighty fine, waiting for me to cover over the soil with some more mulch of some description it's not yet the grass cutting season so we'll be doing that for a while i have been tempted to think about putting some of my manure on there i think it might be a bit rich but i don't know pretty hardy raspberries when you look at that you certainly get that feeling and i've just noticed in there i can see the bluebells starting to come through and show themselves there's a good one two three four five six seven eight nine clumps in there and they are the natural occurring bluebell which is wonderful to see and last year i had thousands of poppies in here so it'd be interesting to see if they come up in actuality this time of year is a really good time to clear up it's not on my agenda today but you can see we've got a mound of grass there quite a lot of grass here and various bits of sort of burnt out bindweed which could come out so yeah i'm thinking that perhaps in the next week or two if i've not got something pressing i might just have a bit more of a clear up in here we'll see right i've had a fantastic idea well i think it's good anyway and if you look at my rhubarb oh, there's a couple of things to observe one there's some fairly old wooden stems, which I think I'm going to remove. There's this shoot, which I would imagine is a, a bush of some description, but I think I'm going to do away with that because I really don't want that growing in the same spot as the rhubarb. And then of course my rhubarb is showing lots of lovely opening leaves from those buds. And I was thinking the other day when I was setting up this barrel arrangement, by the way, I found a step for that barrel, which makes those quite nice and even, which I'm getting used to. Don't know whether they're going to live here or not, but they seem all right at the moment. They blew over in the wind, but of course they will be full of water. But while I was doing that, I emptied this and discovered that it had an opening at the bottom. Now I killed a rhubarb by covering it, that one there nothing to be seen but that had no entry point for light at all and i'm thinking this would just be perfect to get some extension on those stems so i think that's what i'm going to do so first things first give it a bit of a tidy up and get rid of that shoot so that it doesn't interrupt the growth
Well, I'm not going to yank at these stems because I don't want to... Oh, broke out really easy. Maybe the others will do the same. Yeah, they do. So I don't need to yank at them. They're just breaking at the base, which is a good time to just give it a bit of a clear up. Get rid of any of the leaves that have died and fallen on the floor that I've missed in the past. I've got an awful lot of stuff here, but it's all going to go on the compost heap. This big one needs to come off. There it goes. And then I am going to pull this because I don't want the roots to stay. And there we are. Don't know what that was, but it's gone. Right. Now, that was very simple. And this is my plan. As simple as that. And then I'm hoping that those leaves will reach up to the sky and the light and give me some long pink rhubarb stems, which are, in my experience, quite a lot sweeter. Right. So this is the area that I've been putting off for quite a while now. And well, it's got to get worse, I think, before it gets better. And it's mainly about recovering this box. And I'm thinking that this could well be the answer to my final push out of the shed. So I'm going to move everything. I think probably, I don't want to move it very far. I'm probably going to take it onto my sort of shed base area and pull out all the nets and then decide where I'm going to position it and what I might need to do to the ground because long term, I don't want to be moving it around too much. Right, onward. <laughs> Okay, that's everything out of there, which is good. And it's now free to move around, although not particularly stable. It's uh, resulted in quite a pile. It's just amazing how much you can get in a box like that. And I need to rationalize this quite clearly, but all of the fleece and covers, there's a few in there, they will all go into the polytunnel. So I need to, well, fold and roll those and get them in there ready for the oncoming sewing season. And I've got quite a lot of these white bags. There's no reason why I can't condense all these nets into bags so that I can access them easily and minimize the space they take. And then there's a lot of stuff underneath. So there's quite a bit of work to do there and I'll get to that in a bit. But I've moved some old carpet up from here. You can see the naturally growing bindweed, which will proliferate, I'm sure. Got a brick in there as well, which I need to get out. But I'm thinking I need to move this out of the way, lift these pallets or at least move them over and just sort of understand the lay of the land and what I want to do. So what I've got to help me, in theory anyway, is these straps and these are the sort of straps you use to fix a trailer load onto a trailer and just bind them down and I'm thinking that if they go around this then that will aid me in moving it around whilst I decide what to do and I can show you the sort of flaws that occur with this this lid opens all right at the moment although you can see it's a different gap here to down there and it's because of this joint. You can see how the plastic's beginning to give in. So I need to wedge a piece of wood in there to give that some more rigidity as well. And then I can move it around, I think. I might put the doors back in before I move it and then strap it. But the first thing is to see if those straps will go around it. Let's see. Well, typically one of these are done threaded and they take ages to work out what to do. And when I come to fitting it together, it just, just falls short. So I think what I'm going to do is find a bit of chain because it seems a shame not to use two of these and a bit of chain will serve the purpose. I will have to put the door in as well, I think, and then tighten it down. So I'll give it a bit of extra chain. And I've got some in the shed, I'm sure. I'll go and have a look and we'll see if we can get those two sorted out. Objection. 
perspective. They're very fiddly, those. They're fairly cheap and don't work particularly well, but I got one to do what I wanted, which was to keep the integrity of the box. And I might well keep it on there. Right, so I'm gonna lift these pallets, which are rotten through and through because they've been in the wet for so long. This one's not quite so bad because it was put on some carpet. And I'm just gonna move them out of the way and think what I want to do. Because I've got a big area here. Lots of carpet still down. Get that up. It's dreadful stuff, this carpet. Once it starts to rot, it's certainly not good for your allotment, I don't think. Get that out of the way. Right, I've got a few bricks to move and then I'm just gonna sort of semi-level this land and get an idea whether it's a big slope or what. I've got to think about the end of my plot. And if I go along the back line of my compost bins, it comes to about here. So I'm thinking that it's actually not a bad place to keep this box, albeit it might have to shifty up a bit. And uh, once I get level and decide what I'm gonna put down on the ground, then I can start to fill it with the things from the shed. And my plan is get those into the base, put any netting on top that I wanna keep in this box uh, after I've rationalized it into those bags. I'm gonna leave these pallets and things here, but I am gonna take the opportunity to clip this bramble, which is very invasive, and to give myself a bit of a chance. And there's a bit of a plan to move an additional item into the plot. And I've been looking at how on earth I get it in here, because it's quite big. All will be revealed in a future video. But I'm thinking the route from the road, the engineers that work this pole here for telecoms um, have cleared me a nice path because they like to work on it. And I've got a pallet here, which if weight of something going over the fence is gonna be a problem, then at least it can sit on the pallet as it comes over. So yeah, I'm gonna clear this a little bit as a sort of additional job. Right, I'll get sorted out here, clear that. We'll take a look. Okay, well, it's relatively flat here. There's a bit of faffing around to do, but I'm gonna make this a temporary position and all I'm gonna do is put some wooden rafters down and then just turn this bin so it faces into my plot and lines up with the edges. And then that'll leave me a big space in front for landing the thing that's coming. So I'm gonna just turn that round. I'll show you from the top what the line looks like. So there you are, you can see where the edge of my plot is gonna be. The broccoli on the right is gonna go. And that'll be the edge. So I'm gonna turn that box around so that it's in line with the edge of those composters. And then I think I'll work on my pile of nets and see if I can get organized. There we are. It does make me chuckle how poor your sense of orientation is when you're down in the thick of it. I still need to move the far side out about four inches, I'll go and do that. And then I get onto that pile of nets. That's step one anyway. Get that into the polytunnel next. I've got a lot of this weed membrane that is like a felt, it's a real fabric. And to be perfectly honest, it's very poor. Don't waste your money on that real low quality fabric. You can see through it, it tears. I could tear that with my hands and well, it doesn't do the job to be perfectly honest. I've laid some down here just to suppress weed and I might use 
some more of that just in this area just to suppress weed. The other thing I wanted to mention is the nets. So sometimes you can find this really stiff net. It's really not very good. It's hard to manage. It consumes a lot of space and well it just isn't my preferred type of net after having used quite a few different types. I would always go for either the scaffolding netting which you can get from eBay and other suppliers, the EnviroMesh if you really want to get the insect level out, or this bird netting which is available on the internet in a number of places. So they would be my choices. Okay, so the box is in the right place. The nets have been condensed. I've got quite a few bits and bobs here, but they can stay there for now. And that to go away, but I think my next step is to get some of those crates out of the shed and get them into this box so that I'm vacating the shed. And I think these nets, they can either stay outside or they can go on top. Either way, getting things into the box is probably the priority. pretty sorted out now. Everything went in the box, which is fantastic. I've put a few bricks down just to keep that membrane in place. It's absolutely full, but that's okay. It went in a bit like a TARDIS. I've still got lots of stuff that isn't going to come to harm outside. Most of this is guttering and spare nets and bags. And I've really got to think about how I get rid of those main thing would be to try and get them to somebody who's going to make use of them. I'm going to keep some of the squash water pipes and some of the guttering for putting on the shed when I eventually get it. Uh, otherwise I need to think about a few of those bits and the main objective was getting out of the shed which I'm pretty much there. I've got some fixtures and fittings to remove but otherwise it's just a case of a few personal effects, some long tools and brackets. Otherwise, I'm well on schedule for being out of here by the end of February, which is marvellous. And whilst you've been watching me get that box in order, my next door neighbour, a gent who's going to take over the squash bed, he and I have moved the fruit cage into what I think is going to be its permanent site. Time will tell, but there it is. And it's reasonably flat there, which is the main objective. I've got four gooseberry bushes in there at the moment, and I'm probably going to end up having to move those. I have got a spare hole down there, of course, where the rhubarb was, well, slaughtered. I've got to put the back on the back of that cage. But that cage won't be there permanently until I've sorted out this edge and the membrane because this is where there's a lot of ingress of grass. So there's a lot to do here, but the main thing is it's off that gentleman's plot and I can get used to seeing it where it is. I've still got blue pipe to get rid of. I'm going to keep one load of that, but part with the rest of it to a neighbouring allotment site which is just starting up and I thought that might be really useful for them. So yeah, right on to the last job of the day. I've got space around these red currant bushes. I'm going to take the time just to prune them. I'm not going to do a lot. We've got a broken branch on the floor which is coming out and my main objective is to get the side of this bush away from this bed so I can gain easy access. Pretty much the same over there. And then just trim this side so that access here becomes easier. And I might even trim here so I can get between bushes. I'm not so worried about there because I'm not going to be coming and going through there very much, I don't think. And then just a little bit of height because they certainly are getting tall and I just don't want them to become massive. So perhaps six or seven inches off the top of a number of those bigger branches. Right, let's go.
okay, there we go. As you can see, I've got myself a really good path down there now. These bushes are very old and I've always given them a real clipping and they don't seem to struggle with it at all. Opening them up like this will only help them in my opinion. You can certainly get some sun in here now on both sides, which previously you couldn't do. And, but I've just controlled the height more so on this one than the back ones because they're a bit of a screen. These just don't want to get in my way. That's what's come off, which is quite an amount really, more than I thought I would take, but I think it's the right thing to do. Let's have a look at it from this side. Well, the sun's in our eyes, but it's looking pretty good. Good. Well, I think it's been a productive day. Hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you did, then why not like and subscribe? And if you want my updates every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m., the Ochenbar.